<clears throat> Hello, welcome to the first songwriter stream of 2024. This is our monthly February stream we took last month off. Um, we had a little bit of a shuffling of our personnel tonight, but as usual, I'm joined by, I know, never know which way to point, Jason Vitelli, who's here with uh, Music for Multimedia. Above Jason, we have the first of our three special guests tonight, Misa Rai. Misa, where are you joining us from tonight? I'm joining you from Booton, New Jersey today. Booton, New Jersey, welcome. Mm -hmm. Above me, we have the second of our three special guests, Steve Rappaport, my old college friend and original harmonica inspiration. Where are you joining us from tonight, Steve? Hey, everybody, I'm in Wilkesboro, North Carolina, which is just north of Charlotte. North Carolina. All right. Fantastic. And then subbing last minute for our usual co-host, Annie Stone, we have over there inside Misa's box, that guy. Who are you? Hi, uh, I'm, uh, I'm Drew Sheldon. Um, uh, yeah, I'm also here in Booten with Misa in my studio space and uh, excited to be here playing with Misa and uh, thrilled to have the opportunity to play some uh, originals. <laughs> All right, true. Thank you for filling in. Uh, sorry, you you don't get your own box. You're That's fine. you're stuck. You're stuck Honored. in there with Misa. Honored to so, share Misa's box. Yes. So over the course of the next couple hours, uh, you'll hear a few songs from each of us, starting right now with Misa. All right. All right. Hi everyone. I'm Misa Rai, and I'm going to start with a song called One by One. Um, and here we go. Hope you enjoy.
Yeah, yeah. Joining me on that? guitar is Drew Sheldon, super awesome guitarist. So excited to have him here. Was that song called One by One by any chance? It is called <laughs> One by One. <laughs> yes, Great. It is not, uh, it's not fully recorded yet, but we'll get there soon. Fantastic. So um, why don't we spend one sentence with you telling us about that song before we move on to Steve, and we'll have a little bit more time for idle chit chat later. But give us one sentence sure. worth so of song... insight. Into that song, well, um, I wrote that this past summer, and it's just about wanting to find more inspiration with, um, you know, the people that are in my life or the people that I meet, and wanting to really like, you know, yeah, just find inspiration in them and have a good connection, I guess. So that's generally what the song's about. Fantastic. Um... If you're watching at home, this is the songwriter stream, and that was just our first song of the evening by Misa Rai uh, from Boonton, New Jersey. Uh, now we're going to move on to our second special guest, Steve Rappaport, who I don't know if Steve would describe himself as a songwriter. Would you describe yourself as a songwriter, Steve? Um, I do compose music in real time, which is called improvising. I call it free, free improvisation. And um, I have been known to have a song come out. Um, uh, on my debut album, actually, there's a great ballad in the middle of it, uh, which I've actually transcribed. And I might play it later tonight. Um, but uh, I'm going to try to focus on improvising, which is the main thing that I do. Fantastic. All right. I guess that's I guess that's close enough for our purposes. So we'll let you stay on the stream. It's all you, Steve. Take it away. Okay. And my first piece, anytime I perform, is sort of like a tuning piece, uh, just like a violinist would tune up his instrument. I have a piano here. I don't have to turn the tuning pegs, but I do have to get acclimated to the instrument and the performance space or the audience and um, what connection I'm going to draw and uh, that's how I like to begin any performance. I'm going to switch my camera here. And take off my headphones. <laughs>
Thank you. Great stuff. Fantastic, Steve. So, uh, would you like to describe a little bit of that for us? What your experience of acclimating was like this time? Yeah, I mean, when I've had longer sessions, I've been very, and I've been on a new piano. The, that kind of piece has been very important to me, but this is actually a piano I grew up with. Um, I brought it to North Carolina from California. I've had it for 35 years, and um, it's almost like a piece of me. So, um, uh, but, you know, I didn't know, was I gonna do a black key thing, or was I gonna do a major thing? It started out pretty open-minded to tonalities, and um, it did get a little bit dark, um, but uh, that's where it wanted to go. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, that was Steve Improvises. If you're joining us from home, welcome. Uh, we're probably gonna hear two or three more pieces from Steve before our stream ends around nine o'clock. But for now, we'll move along to that random guy who is in the box with, uh, Hi, with I'm Misa Sarai. up there. <laughs> oh, he has a name, Drew oh, Sheldon hi. from Vestit TV. Yeah, hi, thank you for having me on. This is uh, a pleasant surprise. Uh, Steve, that was beautiful. Um, this feels a little bit like improvising in my end. <laughs> um, wonderful, so I'm gonna play a song uh, that's on my band's uh, record and hopefully the, uh, the levels sound okay here. All right, um, so this is a song called Waiting. <laughs> you said that was a song that your band does. What is your band? So uh, the group is called Best Hit TV. Uh, this is actually the first time I've ever played <laughs> any of these songs without uh, my two two of my best friends behind me. So um, yeah, it's a it's a little it's a little odd, but uh, <laughs> happy to be here. Well, you, you have a fan, some random stranger out in the world, just wrote sweet on our incoming <laughs> comment stream. Look at that. You oh, should, hi. Um... 
I wonder. I wonder if they want to collaborate sometime. That's wonderful. It went in a circle around the world and back. Yeah, <laughs> it's great. Wonderful. Misa, he he's literally right there. You could just you could just tell him in person. I know. <laughs> is this the first time people have ever been in the same room together? What's that? Is this the first time people have ever performed in the same room together? Or I'm <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, J Jason and I are frequently in the same oh, physical okay. room together. But uh, <laughs> this little live stream began with our friend Victor in, uh, in 2020 when everything was shut down and the only option people had was streaming. And now all of our in-person gigs are back, but we have such a good time doing this that we've decided to keep it going once a month, uh, third Tuesday of every month, because it gives us a chance to reach out and hang out with people like you in cool. New Jersey and, uh, and Steve, wherever the hell he is. Um, I'm in Manhattan, and where are you, Jason? Jason, I think you're muted. Sorry, I was typing furiously as I'm trying to fix Instagram. Uh, I am in Brooklyn, uh, Greenpoint area, which is right next to the Queens in the Midtown Tunnel. So. So, so, so the stream has sort of become our way to connect to our like-minded musical kinfolk in other states. And then uh, it's good, you know, now we know a bunch of people in New Jersey, so we could call you next week and be like, hey, we're doing a tour stop in New Jersey, let's share a gig. And it's, it works out really well. So, and, and, you know, we invite you. If you ever want to venture into New York City, I know that we hosted Misa once before for an in-person gig at one of our residencies, and we hope to do that again. All right. Um, my turn is next. My name is Phil Robinson. I'm one of the monthly hosts here. All right, this next song, this first song is 4,000 years old. It is not in English. It is in Sanskrit, which is kind of uh, a foundational language underlying the Hindu spiritual tradition. This mantra comes to us and tells us the story of a young mother who is singing a lullaby for her infant child. This young mother happens to be the queen of the land and her young infant son is the prince. So as she sings a lullaby for her baby, she chooses her words very carefully because she knows she's in a position of undue influence. The words she sings to her child are going to influence the kind of man he will become, which of course will influence the character of the future king of the land. So choosing her words very carefully, she comes upon these words. Sudosi, budosi. Sudo 
Krishna Ranjanasi Samsara Maya Pariyaje Tesi Samsara Swapanantra Jamoharni Shram Nachanma Mrejar Trisatsvar Rupi Jason, that right there is the reason I keep you around. <laughs> I, I, I accept praise. <laughs> um, that's one of my favorite songs to perform, and I recently recorded it with Sarabi Ganesh, a classically trained Indian vocalist. And in the near future, I'll be flying out to San Francisco to shoot a music video with her for that song. So, oh, wow. Pre pretty, pretty exciting. All right, so that brings us, of course, to Jason. Uh, it's your turn, my friend. Thank you, Phil. And uh, hey, you got you got some good feedback, Phil. Great tune, amazing pull, and I really appreciate the context. Cool. Th thank you so much. Hello, exactly. I, I like don't think I have. 
I don't think I've, uh, I don't think we've seen you before. Welcome, welcome to our stream. Welcome. <laughs> this, is, this is a tune that I, when I busk out in the subways, is the, usually the first tune. This is my warm-up tune, similar to Steve, how he is his warm-up tune. This is called Long Way. Jason, how, how many times in your life have you performed that song, and where does that rendition rank amongst your lifetime performances? Uh, that, that's that's a that's a tough one <laughs> in terms of rankings. Um, but that that's an older tune of mine. Uh, probably just started. I had written it back in two thousand and six when I was a, an angry 20-something-year-old person <laughs> scowling around the streets of New York. 
<laughs> so, you know, it's kind of about a lot of my tunes from that era are about being alienated from everyone around me, even though I'm in the midst of a city with all these millions of people. So it's sort of in the, the vein of that. Did that young songwriter ever grow up to become a psychologically and emotionally well-adjusted man? Uh, it's a, that's for you to judge. <laughs> All right, stay tuned. So that completes our first trip around the five performers for, for the stream. So if you've tuned in, perhaps you're sitting on your couch, perhaps you're in your automobile, perhaps you're sitting on your toilet, and we are all keeping you company during that most private act. Uh, this is the songwriter stream. We're here the third Tuesday of every month. Uh, Jason and myself tonight are joined by our three special guests, uh, coming up for her second song of the stream from Boonton, New Jersey, Misa Rai. Hello, I'm back again. We're gonna do a song called Weird Limbo and I hope you guys enjoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, so it's uh, so, so sorry. really quick. Um, I'm just gonna give me the first change, just real quick. I'm just, I, I, it's totally slipped my mind. Oh, I'm sorry. Bye. 
Fantastic. So how does, how does a song like that come about? So that came about when I was, um, it was like getting, it's, it's about getting over a relationship and it's like, you know, when you kind of go no contact after you've stopped talking to this person and it's uh, about going a little bit crazy in that sort of weird limbo space between knowing them and not knowing them anymore and um, just eventually knowing that you need to move on. So that's what that is about. But, well, how did, you, how did you write it? Or how did you come to perform how it with I Drew? That? That, that, last time I saw you perform, it was you with your acoustic guitar. Yeah, yeah. So I usually do it on the acoustic. Um, I don't know too much about music theory or anything like that. So I was just pl playing around with um, different chords that sounded good together and also was influenced by a few other songs that I like, um, at least for the melody, you know, for some mm -hmm. parts of the song. And yeah, I just was messing around with some chords and thought of some weird little words to put together with it. Was thinking about the movie Inception and um, yeah, just <laughs> put it all together and yeah, wrote it from there. Well, that was fantastic. And we have some, Jason's been throwing some comments on the bottom yeah. of the screen from well, David Schwartz, Kenneth, Hi, Matt Hebert, Hi, Ken. Herbert. Hi, Matt. Those are my bandmates, except for Matt. Matt is my partner. All right. Well, uh, they all have good taste. Um, <laughs> fantastic. All right, Misa. Thank you. We will uh, continue on with Mr. Rappaport. Oh, Steve, we can't hear you. Oh, and that's my fault. I, I muted you during that. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's fine. All right, great. I see me. Okay, awesome. Hey, again, I'm Steve Rappaport. Uh, go by Steve Improvises online. Um, uh, my YouTube channel is Steve Improvises. And um, what I do is, again, free improvisation. I create brand new music whenever I sit at the piano and um, um, sometimes I do improvisations based on subjects or moods or ideas and I've been writing some music that uh, was based on little one or two word prompts here and there um, but today I'm just trying to be fully free and uh, we'll see what happens.
So what's your process in, in creating these improvisations? Is there an idea that you have in your mind? Is it totally blank? I do try to make it come from a place that's honest and um, open to possibilities. Um, you know, sometimes there is a melody or a theme that presents itself, or sometimes there's a chord progression. Um, but uh, a lot of the time I feel like my music is guided by my sort of, I, I like to call it micro emotions because uh, it's not really about love or sadness or the big uh, macro ideas. It's sort of uh, what guides you, what moves you from moment to moment throughout life um, that I find to be really interesting to explore and uh, I love that idea that's uh, where it comes from now I have a question at, at about one minute and 13 seconds into that you played a C sharp <laughs> why, why did why did you pick that particular note at that time I do have um, a fair memory of what's gone on because you know, I, I'm listening to the music just as I'm creating the music, and right. um, I'm trying to make things be logical in some way and relate back to things that have happened before. In that particular piece, I decided not to, you know, recapitulate, go back to the A section. There was an open fifth thing that was happening at the beginning. Which is something I've always loved the sound of since I was a kid. Um, but um, then there was a descending minor third progression, and, and there was this thing that kept going back to the C major that uh, went to an open fifth B um, as an ending. That I guess each of those sections kind of ended there. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I do remember the musical contours and story that's underneath all of that. Um, uh, I don't expect all of my audience to <laughs> hear all of that or have perfect pitch or, um, you know, I hope that uh, the inner dynamics and relationships of the harmonies express yeah. those ideas and feelings without anyone knowing the underpinnings of that. Well, that was truly fantastic and truly transported me for its duration and after. Um, all right, so Steve Improvises joining us from North Carolina. Stick around. We'll have a couple more pieces from Steve before the stream ends tonight. If you're watching us, uh, we're streaming right now on the Roomful of Sky channel. Either you're watching us through one of three platforms, either Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. Whichever one you're on, please do all the things. Do the liking, the subscribing, the sharing, the commenting. Uh, thank you. All right, we'll move along to Imposter Misa Rai up there above me. Hi, how are you? I'm not Misa. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Steve, that was beautiful. Um, I love improvisational music, and so I just want to shout that out before we get into it. Um, that was really well done. Thank you so much. Of course. Um, all right. Uh, so <clears throat> I'm kind of playing songs uh, from my band. We, we put out a record uh, that uh, we recorded ourselves and um, put that out in October. Uh, and so this is, uh, this is another song from that. This is called... Um, 
lose yourself uh two two words um so lose yourself you're in your own way there's a world out there and it won't wait it might be sun and it might be rain whatever you find is bound to change you're not alone this song Sounds better with a harmony Clear out your throat Normally when we play it, my partner sings the, comes in in the second chorus with uh, the song sounds better than uh, with a harmony and it kind of proves the song's point. But uh, <laughs> um, I like it's the funny. idea that the, the lyrics are sort of telling the listener what to do. <laughs> with the yes. You don't usually get that sensibility from, from a song. Yeah, um, that came that song came out of um, uh, it was actually a pandemic song, so it's kind of fun to, to play this. Um, and it, it came out of a conversation I was lucky to lucky enough to sit in with uh, Nora Jones and Jeff Tweedy um, about songwriting, and I just wow. I left that conversation and just went and and wrote a wrote that, and it's it's probably like the most Tweedy esque song I think uh, the band plays, but um, yeah, it was it, it just came out of that that pandemic space of trying to go with the world and and how it how it comes and, and appreciating the the good people in your life. Got some good feedback here. Yeah, thank you, Kenneth. Thank you, thank you, Paulo. Oh, yeah, thank you so much. That's very kind. Have you got a fan come out from wherever he was hiding? <laughs> <laughs> the um, Miko the pug. <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> Mika is it Steve? Miko, like the raccoon in Pocahontas. Oh, Miko. <laughs> um. Since since my last turn singing a song, I've I've deduced that "Hello Exactly" is actually Drew. It's me. So yes, I was gonna say that's uh, yeah. <laughs> that's um, so that's a that's a nonprofit record company that I run out of this room here. Um, oh okay. And so that's kind of the umbrella of, of everything that uh, you know I I and, and all my friends we all kind of it's like our little collective. Okay. Uh, tell us a little bit more about Hello exactly. Um, yeah, so uh, you know, it was it kind of was born out of again another pandemic thing where I was making all different kinds of music, and for some reason, uh, you know, my friend um, Alex, they also uh, have multiple projects, and they they do a um, they have their own collective uh, called Moss Punk Records, and that started out of uh, having multiple um, multiple projects that have different sounds, and it's just a way to explore different things and. Uh, uh, they describe it as a uh, a healthy way to have multiple personalities, um, and so that's kind of how it started for me during the pandemic was just making a, a whole bunch of different music while I was alone in my apartment, 
and then um, getting out of that, making more music with my friends, um, meeting people like Misa. Um, there's a, a, a good friend of mine, uh, Daryl, who plays in a, a group called Quality Living. Um, and we've just all been making music in this space. And it's, it's, uh, it, w it was born out of this idea that digital music and digital releasing has really changed the role of record company, I think, in the 21st century. Um, and so if, uh, if, if the traditional offerings of a record company aren't you know, what they used to be, what is a record company offer now? And, and the idea is community. And so uh, it's, I, I wish I could say I had a plan for what this is, but it's really just an experiment, uh, Steve. It's a, it's an improvisation to see if there's a different way um, that a record company can serve musicians, especially as life gets harder and harder right now to make a living and and, and, and making music. Um, so that's that's what we're, we're working on. <laughs> what, what, what you just said is, literally my exact story as well oh awesome if you, could, if you could see up there room full of sky music began its life as room full of sky records a record label oh, and organ or organically over time J jason vitelli was one of our original artists and over time uh it kind of gradually organically morphed into more of a community more of it became more of a vehicle for putting together live music events and gatherings that sort of blurred the line between audience and performer a bit. I love uh, it, 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 uh, it, 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 it strayed so far from its original purpose as a record label that having Roomful of Sky Records no longer made sense. So a, a few years ago, I changed it to Roomful of Sky Music, but... Um, that's beautiful. Uh, well, next time I'm in, I'm, uh, I'm in Manhattan, I'm definitely buying me a cup of coffee and we'll talk about it. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Wonderful. All right. So thank you, Drew. Thank you. Um, my turn again. Um, I did have some preconceived notions as to which song I was going to play, but I am now in the moment. I'm throwing that all out the window. Um, Steve kind of... Imp inspired me to play this next song instead so so this is like a this is a really neat experience for me i think i i don't know if i mentioned this on the stream or just backstage before we joined but uh steve is a friend of mine from college when i um when i became a start when i decided to become a musician um you know i uh my my starting well we we both attended I'll, i'm gonna blab for a couple minutes because i'm very much having this nostalgic moment but um i always loved music but i wasn't born with any apparent natural musical gifts i was very um i was you know i couldn't sing in tune i couldn't clap to a beat uh, I, I was very so my heart was broken that like why would i be born with the desire and passion for music but no talent whatsoever um so it was never a realistic idea for me to to think about becoming a musician i thought um i should just do what i'm good at with my life so what i was good at i was a very good student i was a big science nerd like straight a's organic chemistry all that stuff so i went to brandeis university to be pre-med and divine intervention happened. I was accepted into medical school early at the beginning of my sophomore year of college. So having a spot in medical school waiting for me upon graduation, I actually didn't have to take any more science classes for the next two and a half years of college. So I thought to myself, this is my opportunity to see if I have what it takes to become a musician. So I dropped all my science classes and I signed up for uh, like intro to guitar, intro to music, intro to piano, voice lessons, I joined the choir and I just practiced every day for like five or six hours uh, to see if I could become a musician before I graduated. And I decided if I can do music, um, I'll go on and continue to be to do music with my life, but if I fail, I will. Um, I'll just be like that was a good experiment, and then I'll go off to medical school. And then so, um, the the climax of my dream 
was I put on a, a big concert of original music, my senior recital, right before I graduated. Um, it was like a four-hour Bruce Springsteen level of ambition concert, and I recruited all of the talented musicians, my fellow students and good friends that I knew, and uh, Steve, of course, was one of them. Steve played piano, and he played harmonica, and he was actually my harmonica inspiration. Uh, in college, Steve played harmonica on my songs before I ever even touched a harmonica. So thank you, Steve. It's so, so great to be reconnected to you and to see how you've musically blossomed. Steve used to do these piano improvisations back in college. He used to get access to the music building, Slasberg Recital Hall, when he could, and play on the big uh, pipe organ. Um, and it would be a treat if you could be in the presence. Um, so it's so amazing to see all these years later uh, still thriving. Here's a song that I performed at my senior recital in college that Steve was a part of. Except I never finished the lyrics to this song in time, but I loved the music so much that at my, at my college concert, I performed it anyway, and I just sang it uh, with a uh, made up I performed a whole song like that because I just wanted to perform it. And then I sat on that for like 10 years. And then 10 years after graduating, I finally finished the lyrics. So here is the, com Steve, here's the completed version. <laughs> cool to hear the, the story behind that song also. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is called Late at Night. AKA my insomnia song. so hard every day and it all just slips away chase a dream through the years still i'm stuck in my own fears wonder what i do it for out the bed out the door and run past the houses in the cool moonlight breeze i raise my fist in the air my nights will be my own again to do with as I please This I promise, this I swear Running hard down the street Devil snapping at my feet Moon is bright, night is cold Worried that I'm getting old Had a time, out of breath One day closer to my death With existential thoughts I'm blessed All of life meaningless Every night just the same Trying to outrun my shame Still I search and still don't know one more time into the night I go. The stars shine above us and bathe us in their love, secure of their place in the sky. As a creature of this world who struggles down below, how can I be sure of mine? Sometimes I just don't know. How can I? 
can I be sure of my place in this world? Late at night, toss and turn, never sleep, never learn, still I search and still don't know. One more time, to the night I go. In the cool moonlight breeze I raise my fist in the air My nights will be my own again To do with as I please This I promise, this I swear Yeah, I never knew the story behind that. Yeah, it was one. I I think I that think um, that... oh, I'm hearing some echo. The uh, that basic idea, the. I think that's like. I think that's like the fourth bit of music I ever wrote on guitar. Like I, I basically discovered what a, a pull off was. And I'm like, these two songs, sound, these two chords sound really awesome if you just pull off that same note and alternate. I'm gonna write a whole song about that. So that's like probably the, just about the earliest thing I ever did on a guitar. You got some. You got some uh, great feedback. Um, someone on Instagram. Finally, I got the Instagram uh, feed going. So I'm glad that happened just in time for your song. Uh, Jimmy Lee said, "Cool chord progression," and uh, Hello Exactly Records was on there, and he or she or they said, "Love the quote one more time into the night I go." End quote. I've never heard that saying in an emotional context before. Well, Hello Exactly is already established as having exquisite taste in music. So, what could I say? <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you all. Jason, you're up. All right. Oh, and our friend Jordan Sivek. Yes. Hey, Jordan. Good to that. see you through the stream. Jace, uh, Jordan has his birthday show coming up at Triad Theater, coming up very soon. Um, I believe it is on, what is Ooh, the Saturday? Wow. Saturday, awesome. March 2nd, next Saturday. Good to see you, Jordan. We got we to gotta talk about your concert. Uh, Jordan, he's great. I have his record. It's fantastic. Jordan's been on our stream a couple times. I also got to start reaching out to everyone about Porch Stomp this year. So, oh, Jordan, yeah. I'll be reaching out Why? to you about Porch Stomp. Jason right. Vitelli, if, if, you are, if you are fortunate, perhaps there will be a spot for you on the Roomful of Sky stage as well. <laughs> oh, yeah, Jordan just put the uh, date up in case anyone's interested. March 2nd, 2.30 p.m. in Manhattan, Triad Theater. It's the, it's the most successful and I believe largest off-Broadway theater um, in Manhattan. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real treat to do a show there, so definitely not something to miss. All right. 
So, in the midst of me dealing with uh, technical issues for the past <laughs> hour, I uh, did not think about the next song to do, but the conversation has driven me to sing about uh, or bring this song to you all. So, uh, this one is it's about accepting the moment as it comes to you. A lot of what Steve was talking about, and even Phil with uh, you know just the sound of those chords. You know, and Misa was talking about just just connecting with the chords. It's it's that it's some kind of higher connection that we're we're all achieving when we create. So this is about that. It's finally. Jason, what's the name of that song? Uh, it's called Stars Align. That's right. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like when things just go all according to plan, the stars align. I think I, think I was thinking of the, the movie 2001, because 
like all the planets align, like everything aligns right before he goes through that tunnel at the end. I don't know. So I had that visual in my head when I was writing the song. So I brought that lyric into there. Fantastic. Jason, how, how are you so awesome? Phil. Learn it from watching you, Phil. Oh, good answer. I love this guy. Wow. <laughs> We'll, we'll keep you around. You, you could have that spot on the room full of Sky stage at Porch Stop. Uh, thank you, Phil. And hey, Jordan says he might be able to stop by our show uh, on uh, Leap Year. Leap oh, that's right. Hey, Jason, we, we didn't think of this. Do you, if you, do you have your flyer handy? Yeah, yeah, let me throw that up. Uh, we'll, we'll wait until... Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll wait till the next round. But, no, uh, we'll wait till the next round, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll put up the flyer and talk about that show. That's right. J Jason's got a very big show that comes around once every four years. The <laughs> Leap Year, the Leap Day Rock Show. All right. Um, without further ado, Misa Rai. Hi again. Um, this is going to be a song called Messy by Olivia Dean. <laughs> Your side. 
Thank you. Fantastic. I love how that ended. That was just like it, it keeps you on a, on the lit, keeps you right on the limb. Yeah, exactly. That's it's funny. not like getting too far into it, but it's sort of yeah. like, you know, skinning around the edges of it a little bit. Thanks. Misa, how how are you so awesome? Um, well, I've been singing for a long time, and I've been actually performing for a long time as well and busking in front of people and um, I think that's helped my confidence a lot. I usually used to busk on the subway actually um, in about like 110th Street I would busk and so oh, wow. really singing there for like six years has really just um, developed my voice a lot and also like I think my just confidence level like in performing so I don't have too many like too much stage fright or anything anymore. so I think that helps. So, yeah. It's amazing Great. what busking Good. does. It's like a, it's almost like a sport in a way. Yeah. It, it takes a lot of energy because people are passing by you, and you know, like yeah, to it's get a their lot. attention takes a lot of finessing. Like you yeah, learn how to do it. Yeah, it does. And you know, I gotta pay attention to the crowd really, and sort yeah. of. It's fun because I get to switch between songs a lot when I'm there, and sort of just tailor the music to what kind of people I think are coming into um, the subway, what kind of people I'm seeing, and um, yeah, it is kind of like a sport. Hey, are, are we hearing, what were we hearing? Was that a dog? I think it's a dog knocking. Yeah, yeah. it was my dog knocking, yeah. Sorry about you that. You can tell us about oh. that. <laughs> I can go put him away if you think it's... It was a little distracting while yeah. Misa was talking. You know, right. thank, you, thank you, Steve. Um, all right, well, actually, Steve is up next. Um, <laughs> we'll just have to deal with the dog. I'll, I'll move it. Don't worry about it. It's going to be very Don't worry about it. You, you, right. You, <laughs> you, could in, you could incorporate the dog into your improvisation. you got to interact yeah. with your environment, right? That's right. That's what Victor used to do. His cat would like walk on his keyboard while he play. <laughs> um. So I, I guess I'm up next again. I'm Steve Improvises. Or, my name is Steve Rappaport, and I go by Steve Improvises online. And um, my mind is blank at the moment. Um, we'll see what uh, what I come up with.
You see, one thing that came one thing that came to mind when I was listening to it was when do you decide to end it? Is there like I know again we were talking about how it just comes to you, but is yeah. there like a moment where it's just like uh, it's it's done? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean um, endings are. There's a lot of different ways to end music. Um, you know, things can vamp on an idea and fade away, or they can uh, recapitulate. Um, you know, get up a minor piece that ends on a big major chord, like in Baroque music. Um, there is a sort of feeling of a close coming, and actually, a, that that felt like it could have closed maybe a minute and a half earlier. Um, but I just didn't didn't feel like it had spoken all the things I wanted to say yet, so I kind of extended it. Um, it'll be interesting to listen back for where that false ending was. <laughs> um, and yeah, in that case, the first three notes actually are. I was inspired by Phil's story and. Uh, I just remembered this uh, final piece that I performed in one of my concerts in college. Um, I gave uh, uh, four and a half uh, solo recitals in college and, and I did them on my birthday in May 12th. Um, and um, it wasn't like an official concert on the um, school calendar because it was like after after classes ended um, but I uh, um, I did one of my 20th 21st 22nd 23rd birthdays um, and um, I've got uh, tapes of those uh, <laughs> you know cassette tapes was the high-end quality back then um, I've been restoring some of that music but uh, yeah one of those last finale pieces from one of those concerts ended yeah. with that music so it just came to me to try it out again today I don't think I took it as many places as I did back then but it was you know after performing for an hour and a half so it's like saying like a memory is you know, like when you have a memory it's actually a memory of a memory of a memory mm. you know? so it, like that piece is sort of how you remembered it now but it's yeah. uh, removed that many, you know, uh, memories ago. <laughs> yeah. Are you still doing concerts on your birthday, Steve? Well, I recorded my first album on my birthday when I was 43, about two years ago. Um, uh, I had wanted to do a concert, I just didn't really have an audience. <laughs> so. Um, I did it at a studio in Winston-Salem on a beautiful Busendorfer piano and um, it's about uh, 90 minutes of maybe 100 minutes of all free improvisational music um, and uh, yeah this coming May 12th is on a Sunday it's coincides with Mother's Day I hope to do uh, Performance. If not, I'll do a live stream from a studio. Um, I'm hoping to do it from a studio down in Charlotte that has an amazing new Yamaha piano that uh, wow. will transcribe the music as well as record it. That's that's right. You got to take back May twelfth from those mothers. <laughs> don't, don't let them kick you around like that. It's your birthday. Right. <laughs> Okay, fantastic. Steve improvises, so if you're enjoying our stream, stick around. We'll have one more improvisation from Steve before the stream is through. But for right now, we'll turn it back over to Mr. Hello Exactly. Hello. I just figured that out like halfway through the stream that you were Hello Exactly. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's my, that's my um, I don't know. It's a nice way to engage with folks. Um, so, Steve, uh, lovely. Uh, I loved uh, Miko's additions, uh, um, and I'm just I'm I'm letting you know because we shared the space with a reggae band that rehearses down the hall. So, <laughs> um, if that if this is just the the 
the life of a musician, I suppose. But uh, I'm not sure if you can hear them, but they are just getting warmed up. They sound lovely. Um, <laughs> so, uh, great. Well, um, I am going to, inspired by Misa, and like I said, I'm kind of pulling a set list out of thin air. Um, I'm going to do a cover, and um, if there's one thing I've learned in my many years of playing music is that if you're going to do a cover, uh, you should do one you haven't played in months and is a jazz standard with a lot of chords. Um, so I'm going to do uh, a song um, called I Couldn't Stay Away From You that uh, I guess is probably most famous for being an Ella Fitzgerald song. Um, and I'm going to do it as a solo singer, uh, kind of in um, closer to uh, this amazing rendition. Uh, if you don't go listen to my band because you heard me play here, please go listen to the four nights sing I Couldn't Stay Away From You. It's... It's uh, one of my favorites, so here, here that goes. We quarreled and said it's all off Then we agreed to call off Everything we had planned for two I told myself I'd never come back But I couldn't stay away from you I started to feel so lonely Waiting for you to phone me Just as you always used to do And sitting by the phone I knew, dear That I couldn't Stay away from you Somewhere playing our favorite song it sounded as though the tune kept saying go back into their arms where you belong and so I gave up pretending Oh, what a happy ending When you confessed you miss me too And now we'll always be together I just couldn't stay Why did you pick, why did you spontaneously pick this one to sing, Drew? Um, I really, I really love that song. Um, I, uh, I actually, uh, I found it on a seven inch at a used bookstore in Montclair. Um, I'm a, a huge uh, Motown and soul music fan. And so anytime I see old seven inches <clears throat> with, uh, you know, that look a little beat up and they have a, a the name on them. <laughs> I always grab them. And so I grabbed that and I'd never heard that song before. And it, it wound up not really being, you know, uh, from the 60s. Uh, I, I believe the Four Tops version is sometime in the 40s that it sounds almost in the style of the, the Ink Spots, uh, which is another really great um, quartet of, of singers. Um, and I just love the chords in that song and I love the, the if you listen to their version the harmonies are really beautiful um, and uh, best at TV we keep threatening to uh, do a version of it um, and uh, but you know every time we listen to it we're like wow we really have to sit down and tear those harmonies apart and so um, you know working on the record and things we haven't quite had uh, the time but um, you know it's a song that I used to 
uh, play for my grandmother when she would ask me to to play some music. She was a, a big music lover. Um, and so it's just been around for a few years in my life. And uh, I was just trying to think of something to play. And um, that I just really, that song really means a lot to me. I think we could feel what it means to you when you play it. Oh, sure. thank you. <laughs> yeah. It's um, yeah, certainly not an original, but it, 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 like I, I just feel a very strong connection to it. So it's easy. It's easy to sing. It's one of those covers that's easy to sing, you know, like uh, I don't know, like it's it's yours. Um, it just yeah. feels feels great to play. <laughs> Fits like a glove. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Well, well, that that's that's a perfect segue to the song <laughs> that I picked to sing next. I was I love um, that. I'm going off book. I was inspired, um, I think, well, like I said earlier, I was inspired by Steve uh, being reconnected, um, g- giving me strong college flashbacks, and uh, I wasn't planning to perform this song, but this song, I think this is my number one favorite song, period. Um by Cat Stevens. The, um, it's a song that I just loved for years as a music fan. And I don't know what your journeys as musicians are like, but through my life, I keep encountering songs I love. And every once in a while, I pick up my guitar and I try to play it and I try to sing it and I make a little recording and I listen. And it sounds awful. And like I'll try to do some like Stevie Wonder song with like, and I'll be like, that doesn't sound good with my playing and my voice. I will never attempt that song again. Oh, well, I guess it's just one of those songs I'm not going to play. And then like four years later, I try it again and I suck a little bit less. And then like four years ago, like I try it again and I'm like, holy shit. I could perform this song. And then it's like, that's the most exciting thing. A song for maybe 10 years I thought was beyond my ability to perform. And then one day I'm able to do it. And that happened with this Cat Stevens song. It was one that I would just listen to for hours and hours and hours. And then after a lifetime of loving it, I became able to play it. And now it's a song that I play for hours and hours and hours. And, um, I feel so indebted to Cat Stevens when I encountered his songs. They, to me, his music, his songs are the journal of his authentic spiritual quest. And that that basically became the mode of my own songwriting. And uh, this song is my favorite. to the wind, to the wind of my soul, where I'll end up, well, I think only God really knows, I sat upon the setting sun, but never, 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 I never wanted water, Never. I listen to my words, but they fall far below. I let my music take me where my heart wants to go. I swam upon the devil's lake, but never, 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 I never made the same mistake, no, never, never, never.
it, you know what's striking about that tune? It, it, the brevity of it is perfect. Like it yeah. says exactly what it's supposed to say in the amount of time it says it. It doesn't need a bridge. It, it doesn't need a, a big chorus. It doesn't. It doesn't need to be anything more than it is. And that, that's something that's just amazing about it. It it clocks in at about two minutes. But yet it doesn't feel quick or rushed. It has like a stillness yeah. about it. Yeah. Um, it, inter what, one interesting thing about that song is that, um, you know, Cat Stevens, at the height of his fame in the 70s, converted to Islam. He found what he felt for him was the, the answer to his spiritual quest. And he became a devout Muslim and changed his name he didn't just convert, he changed his name to Yusuf Islam. And he took it very seriously. So like a, a most strict interpretation of the Quran is that we can I, I might be getting details wrong, but it's something along the lines of we profane the pureness of vocal music by playing instruments along with singing. So for a number of years, he only did vocal music. And he, you know, he, he didn't really do singer, songwriter, or pop stuff. He did r religious music. But he re-recorded re the wind with his singing and just wind sounds. And that was kind of like one song that remained part of his repertoire as a as a religious vocalist and it, it worked in that context as well as just like a spiritual hymn and then since then he has since reconciled the aspects of his his musical his musicality and now he he is back to writing pop music and using instruments and all that but uh, but the wind was a song that i think ne never left him through any phase of his his journey That is all. Okay, Jason, <laughs> it's your great. turn. That was a great song choice. That was beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, great stuff. You. One, one thing interesting about, you know, sacred and uh, secular music, as we learn in school, it always evolved in many ways parallel. But there are obviously their audiences were very different. Um, so it's so interesting that he kind of because, you know, these days you could bring the sacred into a pop song, you know, so there's not that delineation that there used to be in Western, you know, the Western arts. Uh, but it, it's just so interesting because the intent behind it seems different. The, you know, um, obviously the text comes from you, most religious music, the text comes from the Bible or Quran or, you know, it comes from the Psalms. Uh, Whereas a lot of secular music would come from, it would be a love song. Um, so it's just interesting how it evolved, how those two lineages influenced each other and evolved together and grew together in, in many ways. And I, I'm a fan of uh, gospel music, and that, that's one of those styles that just really bridges it very well to the point where a lot of pop music is based upon gospel music. So, on that note, I have no idea what I'm going to play right now. My wife's home, Lisa, so I just said hi to her. Um, you want to sing? You can sing. Lisa's going to sing with me. Uh, sorry for mess up. Sorry. Hey, Lisa. Is background lady. Is, 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 isn't it Jason's responsibility to have a nice home-cooked dinner waiting for you when you arrive home from work? Oh, no, no, no. He'll have a <laughs> Stouffer's or a banquet. Maybe around, I don't know, 10? <laughs> if he's lucky. <laughs> it's not that. The leftover Hot Pockets that may have been on the counter for too long. 
Oh, have you heard shit. of the fried rice syndrome? All right, I'm gonna shut up. Sorry. <laughs> All right. You just say no more. Sure. Sorry, I'm retuning without actually using a tuner. Pretty uh, aggressive. Let's tell me that after the song, not before. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, this one's called Say No More. A lot of my stuff uh, is very introspective and angst-ridden, and this is one of those ones where it's like, let's stop to smell the roses and stop complaining for a little while. So, one, two, three... Lisa, wait, wait, Lisa, don't go yet. Could she? How are you so awesome? Uh, by proximity. Hello. No. <laughs> no proximity over here. But in the flesh. Proximity over here. J Jason, ru Jason rubs off on everyone. Uh, I mean, so do the people on the screen. They're yes, the yes, there. that's true. I've been listening on my phone, and I was like, I'm going to go in there and say hi to Jason. I wonder, and here I am. <laughs> it's weird. There's like a weird echo, though, from the phone. 
Oh, at least you can oh. hear it from in here. A oh. weird like. Oh, because it's not exactly because it goes around the world a few times before it goes around into your phone. the world. Oh. Around the world. Well, be before I keep on. Blah, blah, blah. Good to see you, Lisa. We'll see you on on February 29th. Yes! Which, uh, Jason, this is a good moment. So we just oh, completed, okay. everyone had their three songs. We're going to do a moment of bookkeeping, show you a flyer, talk about a couple upcoming events, take a group photo, and then we're going to kind of have our encores where each of our three special guests will do one final song each. But uh, Jason, what do you oh, have wait, going on? I on the wrong flyer here. That's a oh man! It still works. I just have to actually hide your uh, hide our name tags. Right, it's covered up. Hold on. It's, been it's cool. Crazy man, 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 many musicians have many musicians have many traditions, and Jason, our friend here, owns Leap Day. Every four years on February 29th, Jason produces this concert in Manhattan at Connolly's. Uh, Connolly's is a fantastic, it's an Irish pub with a state-of-the-art stage, light show, sound system. We all love playing there. And uh, this year, 2024, we are going to be there next Thursday. Myself, Jason and Lisa, who you just heard, they are two of the members of the Big Sticky Band. Uh, we also have Victor V. Gerbo, our good friend, and Swagatha, Swagatha Biswas. Myself, Victor, and Swagatha are doing a set each, and then I think Big Sticky Band. What are you guys doing, like three hours? Yeah, we're getting some uh, you know, old uh, special guests coming up. It's going to be sort of a, a big extravaganza. So just, We're last because we want everyone to be really drunk and excited. So. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds like a... Good once every four year kind of event, pull out all the stops. So if, if you're in the New York area, please come by. Uh, you could follow the links, whatever platform you're watching this on, surrounded by that link to our stream tonight. We have lots of messaging about this show next Thursday, so uh, come join us. Um, Jason, as soon as you're back on the screen, we will we'll do our group photo every time Room Full of Sky produces an event. We have our moment where all the musicians gather, but if it's a live stream, we do our little screen capture. So, Jason, are, are, we, are we assembled for maximum yeah, yeah. aesthetic value? My, my camera got a little wonky, but... Uh... All right, everyone. Look beautiful. All right, let me see how that came out. I might do one more retake. Uh, let's see, hold on one second. Oh, it's actually pretty good, but we could Woo! even do better. Let me see. Three, two, one. Okay, we got that. Um, those of you who've been watching our stream, thank you. This is Songwriter Stream. We do this the third Tuesday of every month. Myself, Room Full of Sky Music, and Jason's company, which is that pinwheel logo up on the top right. Uh, Jason's company is Music for Multimedia, which is the intersection of anything between technology and music. Jason is your guy. And, uh, and uh, we'll turn it over to Misa. Did sound just go out? No, it, um, I wasn't hitting the right button. <laughs> oh, okay. um, Okay, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you so much, everyone that came, and um, we've had some amazing musicians tonight, and it's been really good to hear all of you perform some originals and also some covers. And um, this last song is going to be a song I did with my friend Zach Serp, who um, is also another really great musician, has his own projects out. And this, uh, we rewrote this in 2020. And it's sort of a protest song, actually. Um, came out of a lot of the protests going on in 2020. And um, it's called Overturning Buses. <laughs> and hope you guys enjoy.
you. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for Fantastic. tuning in. Thank you for listening. Um, we've had a great time, and this is Drew Sheldon on the guitar. Super great guitarist. I'm so happy that he was able to join me today. And yeah, see you guys next time. Fantastic. All right, so that's one more improvisation from Steve, and then we'll turn it back to Drew to close out our night. All right, great. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. The dog is being good right now. <laughs> um, I can see this one here. So, um, I'm... I'm, un I'm undecided here. I've got the music of the ballad I talked about earlier that I created during my album session. It's about 40 minutes in. I had done some very uh, deep soul searching kind of music for a long time and I just sort of let go and decided to play something in my favorite key, which is D flat major which is um, amongst classical composers, kind of the universal key of beautiful love music, you know, music like the Rachmaninoff 18th variation on Paganini and, um, you know, Claire de Lune. There's many, 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 many examples of that key being uh, the best. And, um, it's also very comfortable on the piano. Um, and so I guess I'm going to finish off with this piece. It's called The Sunrise Ruby, which is after a poem by Rumi. And um, uh, when I first created it, performed it, it was um, pretty much verse, chorus, vamp. <laughs> um, and so now that I've transcribed it and actually have an idea of what it is, the, I, I do like to repeat the verse and the chorus <laughs> because it is very song-like. So. Um, again, my name is Steve Rappaport. This is Steve Improvises, and this is called The Sunrise Ruby.
Very nice, Steve. Thank you. Great way to end the night, for sure. Thank you. Yeah. Steve, you must be related to Shana Rappaport. Steve. <laughs> Did you ever hear that before? Lots of Rappaports. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, this has certainly been a treat. Thanks so much for being part of this, Steve and Misa, and also this mystery random guy up here who, uh, Drew, thank you for spontaneously filling in for thank our you missing host, Penny, tonight. Yeah, this uh, has been wonderful. Our good friend Jeff Jacobs from San Diego. Greetings. Hey, Hey, Jeff. Hey, speaking of uh, using this stream to connect to our friends in other states, Jeff, you should be on our, one of our episodes. I'll, I'll be in touch with some dates. And Jeff, if you want a spot on Porch Stomp this year, let me know now because I'm, I'm, I'm giving away the stage time. So let me know. I think it's going to be Saturday, June 15th. All right. Sorry to, take up, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Uh, Drew is about to perform, and well, here I, I am. Jeff, I don't know. I don't. I, I don't know you. Uh, but thanks for joining. And special shout out. Um, Ocean Beach has a very special place in my heart. <laughs> so uh, always, always jealous when someone says hi. I'm tuning in from San Diego right now. So um, oh, beautiful like city. Most, yeah, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place. Um, so uh, I'm gonna end with um, the closing song on the first best hit TV record. Um, it, it's uh, actually a story you told uh, about um, college. This is a, a, about a college party, and it's I'm, I've moved the mic closer. It's kind of a little bit in a hush, and I was kind of thinking uh, my, my buddies, Steve and Ramsey, are really cooking down the hall, and I was going to walk down and be like, hey, I'm going to play a quiet song. But it's about going to a party in college, and so let's just imagine that um, we're it, it's the vibe in the, the, the basement, and we're upstairs playing music. So... Um, uh, this is a song called uh, Where the Roads Lead.
I remember the night that I met you. I had too much to drink. Across the Brooklyn Bridge, and you were dancing. To music I was playing, you were dancing. Dancing, you were dancing. Thank you all, uh, really, and thank you for having me. It was uh, this was a lot of fun. This was very true. True. What's the name of that song? Uh, so that's that's called "Where the Roads Lead." That's right. You said it. "Where the Roads Lead." Is that yeah. on Spotify? If I go look up "Best that's Hit a- TV," am I going to find that? Yeah, that's on our first record, um, which is called "Being Emotionally Manipulative Is Not Very Punk Rock of You." <laughs> um, and uh, and yeah, our new record that came out in October is called "It Looks Like We Have a Crisis on Our Hands." Uh, which is uh, yeah. something my grandmother used to tell my mom when my mom's brothers would fight in the backyard. <laughs> Man, why don't why don't why don't you hog hog all the words? Why don't you leave some for the rest of us for our album titles? Come on. I I really I love <laughs> uh, super long idiosyncratic album titles. Uh, we yeah i mean it's just kind of an in joke with everybody now and we like to find you know obscure lines uh I, you know and frankly um i took what what few words i could take from fiona apple <laughs> who i think has a all beat um yeah. but yeah yeah we're always looking for whenever we find a phrase that's kind of pithy and, and long-winded we're like that's a perfect album title you can't google that at all so <laughs> i love it all yeah, right so this is SEO. yeah that's right so this has been the February 2024 Songwriter Stream. Uh, myself and Jason are here the third Tuesday of every month, usually with Annie Stone as well. But tonight we had special guests, Misa Rai and Steve Rappaport and whoever that random guy is who just sang that song. Um, <laughs> thanks for tuning in. Uh, this stream is going to live forever on the Roomful of Sky channel on YouTube and also on the Roomful of Sky Facebook page. So. Feel free to revisit one of the performances you like and uh, share the link around. And uh, we'll see you next month. Who are our guests next month? Next month we have New York singer-songwriter Alex Julia and also Staten Island singer-songwriter Michael Ryder. That is on March 19th. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all.